offensively. Some of the great players who have been here and coaches, Lenny Wilkins, John Thompson, both great players here at Providence, and Hall of Fame coaches, Billy Donovan, now the coach at Florida. He played for Rick Pitino, took him to the Final Four. Rick Barnes won a Big East title here. Pete Gillen succeeded, went on to Virginia. Of course, the legendary Joe Mullaney, Dave Gavitt, among the other great coaches who have worked here. Dave Gavitt went on to be really the foundation of the Big East Conference, took this thing at its infancy and made it into one of the premier leagues in the history of college athletics. Joe Mullaney, a career in professional basketball between stints here at PC. You know, Dave Gavitt's my favorite of all, even though they're very talented guys, because he's the guy that said, Bill, I think you ought to give up coaching and try color work. So we should blame him. It's his fault. <laughs> and the commish, uh, one of the great minds in college athletics. And Jay, you and I were talking today, what an input he's had. His fingerprints are in many areas. Whether it's business, administration, or on the floor as a coach, he was also the coach of the 1980 Olympic team. That his wife not. playing the Olympics with the boycott. Yeah. Sorry, Jay. His wife, Julie, alongside. And of course, Dave, with a lot of other great folks, did great work to renovate the Hall of Fame in Springfield, Massachusetts. And if you haven't been there, friends, and you love basketball, you should make it a point sometime to get by the Basketball Hall of Fame. Dave and his colleagues did an unbelievable job. Paulino. Good position inside for Tucker. He couldn't corral it. That was last touch by Mouton. Officials conferring, and John Fogarty got it right. Good piece of officiating. Yep. But I'm impressed with Texas on the glass. I know it's a zone frequently, and there aren't any uh, bodies checking out, but they just get after it. They're overzealous. Well, they send three, sometimes four guys to the offensive glass, and they're willing to race you back. The grass. Long rebound to Cote. It's almost like he was looking for a defender who wasn't there. One of the three. Two free shots, and their first field goal comes with almost six and a half minutes remaining. You heard the roar. They know that is the first field goal of the night for the Friars. And pick up your dribble. Great job here. They got a trap. Well, they trap there. They might have gotten the 10 count in the back one. Better, better read that on your own. You don't have to have the coach tell you what you're in. Thomas. Cote dives on the floor, and last touch by Texas. Now, this is what I expected from the get-go. Getting involved. You've got to match Texas. I mean, this is one of the most aggressive teams in the country, but look at the rate. Cote taking advantage of his minutes. And this time, he gets on the ground. The last time, he bent over at the waist to reach down for the ball when Mouton had it on this side of the floor. That time, he dove. I'll give these fans credit. They're hanging in there with the Friars, even though it's been a struggle throughout for PC. Down by 17 with under six minutes to go. Back screen lock low. Look at them all sniffing the double. Great step through. Gomes too high, but it's tipped up and in by Dwight Brewington. First bucket of the ball game for the freshman. Sean, he was up big for a little guy. He's just 6'5". That's what they list him as, and I wouldn't think he's any taller than that. If in fact, he is 6'5". Listen to this crowd now. Gomes got to be careful. Rejected as Tucker went up. And a foul on the follow-up action against Thomas. Boy, a nice front by Gomes and then the weak side help causing the problems. A much more aggressive look out of man-to-man. -man. And this is where Douthat coming over and Brewington showing that athleticism. And Providence just much more aggressive on both ends of the floor. They're making Texas react to them instead of vice versa, which we saw for the first 14 minutes of the game. Now, you guys have been a million games. What do you think happens to start like that and not be in it? I mean, is it over preparation? Uh, is it, you know, guys Hard thinking somebody's think better? It could yeah. be any of those things, yeah. don't you think? Just uh, impossible to know. I'll tell you what I think it was. I, I think that. Providence came ready to play in this ball game, but Texas came ready for a fight, and they fought harder. And right now, Providence is raising the level of their play to a fight. They scored seven straight points to scratch back into it. The last foul was on Thomas. Brewington got a big hand as he went out after the tip in and then the block shot on defense. And here comes the pressure again. Brown back in, and Moreno almost guilty of the discard with the free arm. He turns it over. Gomes ahead of the pack. He lays it in. 
I'll tell you, he is playing excellent defense despite the foul problems. Well, they couldn't score for over 13 minutes, and now they can't stop scoring a 10 0 run, and it's the defense that has ignited the offense. Jay, we said they need easy baskets. No way better than a stepping up a notch on the defensive end. And give a lot of credit to Ryan Gomes. We talk about his offense, but he has got a great feel out on that basketball court. He's done a very nice job defensively getting some steals, forcing guys into the right area of the court into defensive help. Tonight, Big Monday presented by Bud Light continues. Two more games here at ESPN at 9 o'clock Eastern Time, Kansas. In Boulder to take on Colorado. And then at midnight Eastern, right after Sports Center, it's Pepperdine against Utah. Big Monday presented by Bud Light right here on ESPN. Yeah. All of a sudden, six turnovers for Texas, and it's been a while since Providence committed one. They still have 10. And they bring the pressure again. Oh, oh. close to a backcourt. Boddicker straddling that midpoint line as he took the pass. He's back in with two fouls. Thomas does a great job sticking his guy in that low post. Calvert did a nice job of breaking contact to get around in front to discourage it. Ivy, tough Ooh. runner to quiet the crowd. Wow. Heck of a delivery. That's where Calvert's got to step up and be mm -hmm. bigger because he, he can really discourage it. change the arc. 34-21, Texas. Four and a half minutes left in the first half. Gomes, a nifty move. Well, when you shoot the three and everybody knows he can do it, you can pump fake. The guys bite. Pretty good trap here again. Jump ball. Held ball is the call, and it goes over to Providence. You cannot leave your feet when Ryan Gomes gives you a pump fake. He is so crafty, and Boddicker just takes off and it's all over because he is so crafty inside and another great job on the trap by Gomes. How about the ball fake to freeze Thomas and then be able to slither. He's slippery in there. Brown the freshman into the lane and it's blocked by Thomas. And now Moreno he's from Colombia. The country of Columbia. Thomas had it blocked by Douthat. McGrath couldn't save it along the sideline. And we'll get immediate timeout with 3.56 left in the first half. Tim Welsh's team scratching right back into this one. 34-23, Horns. All right, Reese, thank you very much. Welcome back, everybody. The start of Big Monday presented by Bud Light. And Ryan Gomes helping to ignite this Providence comeback. He leads the Friars with 10 points. Brandon Mouton with 11 for Texas. Tough runner, 13 now for Mouton, the senior from Lafayette, Louisiana. And Coatsy come over nicely, but better offense. McGrath with Coatsy. Gomes, Brewington back in there. Oh, no, Tim. They wave it off. Tim, he's got our spot out here, and I think that was off the rim. No, I think it was on the rim. I think it was a good call. You're so nice to the officials. Yeah, it was. It now was right on the rim. This is off the rim. That is on the rim. I hate to agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, I'm sorry. And a bad pass. Mouton able to run it down. Nearly traveled. Got it to Taylor. Now Buckman. Ivy and Tucker also out there for the Longhorns. Trying to get this back under control. That's the same there lead. Hindle. A tough match for right here. The pick and pop. That they can't play him out there. Plus it takes him away from the rim where they need some rebounding. Three seconds to shoot. And a steal. Gomes ahead of the field. And the dunk. Take it to the house. Well, the Diaz stepped up. And just like Jimmy Beheim, they're known for the chisel walk. They're known for the 2 3 J. But it's their man to man. They practice man to man. They reach back for it and got them in the game. And the best defensive player on the floor right now is Ryan Gomes. Active hands, active feet. He's in the right spot. Actually, he also forced that travel by P.J. Tucker. Send it in. He has been solid. 
With seven and a half minutes left, it was 32 to 21. The 21 point lead, it's down to 11, and they can get it into single digits with a bucket here. They were trying to run their flex screen. Look at Combs cut for the ball. Tough shot. Yeah, he lost his balance as he grazed Boddicker. 2.25 to go in the half. Now, I would be tempted to take him out now in the next 30 seconds with the tip he's got to take. He being gone. Combs, yeah. I don't know if they can afford to. I, I know, but it's something you know, you're right here now with the three-point shot and everything else. Gomes leans in, and that'll be three, I believe. Mike Donato, or rather Bob Donato, had his arm in the air. And that's just two fouls by Boddicker on undisciplined defense. Going for shot fakes from the three-point line. It's tough to know all these officials. You seldom see them. But here to pump the bite. And that's Boddicker. Wow. Two fouls just on leaving your feet. That hurts them in their stretch and their ability to bring the defense away from the basket if Boddicker has foul problems. When we asked Tim Welsh the things that concern him most about Texas, he mentioned Boddicker right away. His ability to play inside and outside. Gomes with 13 points now. But a free throw shooting enabled them to stay close enough in those first 10 minutes. And for all the crowds whining about the officiating, Providence has attempted 17 free throws in Texas four. Now they're going to give him the third here, Jay, and I, I think let's check the foot. Yeah, oh my goodness. Well, yeah, Barnes he was clearly on the line. And yeah, Barnes could have asked for them to look at it, but he chose not to. He may have been blocked off a little there because it was behind, you know, in front of him. Wow, who could have foreseen this turnaround the way this game was going? Uh, easy now, Ryan Gomes. And Texas has to be patient now. And not oh, a good foul that far. Not a good foul. And not a heck of a lot of contact either. Cote called for foul in Tucker. Second foul on Tuka Cote. Super Tuesday returns to ESPN. Two more college basketball games tomorrow night at 7 Eastern Indiana against Wisconsin from the Big Ten. Then on to SEC action at 9 Eastern LSU and Arkansas. Super Tuesday. College basketball style on ESPN. It takes an incredible effort to win at Wisconsin, especially in the Big Ten under Bo Ryan. They've been almost spotless. I really like their team too, Jay. I think they've got a nice mix. Where they can play quick and push it up the floor. Great sets. And the bejeweled Rob Sanders, and I'm sure he's delighted because he, you know, with that injury, he was excited about playing Texas. Just seeing his guy step up, he's got to make him feel good. Tucker missed the second one, made one out of two. Two minutes to go in the half. Providence down by nine. Rath almost got stuck in midair and gave it off to Cote behind him. Now, if you got Gomes on the floor, use him. You're going to go with him. All is set here. They got him locking low. And defended by Tucker, perhaps too tightly. Now, that's the one area they've talked about for years. They're going to really be tough on. And Tucker on the high side. Tough to guard without fouling the low post area, Jay. Now he was draped over him just a little bit. In the grand scheme of things, not a overly aggressive foul, but you need to break contact, get around in front. That's where you really have to pressure the ball because if they're going to call it that close inside, it's going to be hard to guard Ryan Gomes. Gomes looks a little tired. He's trying to catch his breath. Out beyond the three-point line before coming to the line his hands on his knees. Ryan Gomes has been the offense and the defense for Providence. He is now 11 of 11 from the line. 17 points. Providence within seven. And a great job by Gomes. He went towards the backcourt and then sprinted up. And unfortunately, Potts unable to get the ball inbounds. Guards weren't ready to cut and be free for Texas. I think P.J. Tucker was supposed to inbound the ball there. Rick and Joyner alongside Jody DeRamo, restaurant man from town here. Of course, this effective full court pressure defense reminiscent of Patino basketball, which these fans in the Rhode Island capital came to appreciate at the half. The Bank One halftime report with Reese and Bigger among the stories they'll be covering. The big NBA trade between the Knicks and the Suns today, the latest on Pete Rose and a feature big man on campus. And the big man on campus here in Providence is Ryan Gomes.
Uh, Jay can relate to that from his undergraduate days. We chatted with Tim Welsh today, asked him about going. He said, I really can't think of anybody else in the country I'd rather coach. Can you combine his playing ability and his attitude, his unselfishness, his great team leadership? I really can't think of another player I'd rather coach. What a nice thing to say. Sure is. Age. And then we're talking to him through such a gentle guy and a good teammate. And he has keyed this rally. They went nearly 13 and a half minutes into the game without a field goal. Ivy, that was too easy. How about that blow by? I would have gone for Tucker there and get Gomes another one. Just a little open set trying to take it to the basket. And then if the weak side help comes over, a little dump off. Picked and popped by Gomes. He gets to the rim. Cote. Burlington, still plenty of time to shoot. 15 on the shot clock. The Longhorns tenacious in the half-court defense. McGrath, a three. Okay, Ivy did a great job stopping, and then when McGrath got the ball, he didn't close out. He can drill the deep one. Well, that's one of those where you're saying bad shot, bad shot, but he's got the guts to take those and make them. First bucket of the night for McGrath. Ivy underneath, clots over Delphin. Tell you, they have guys who can stick it inside. Big bucket by Jason Klotz, the junior from Houston, Texas. Averaging four points and three rebounds per game. He backs up James Thomas. Of course, Thomas himself has become a bench player this season as Rick Barnes has gone to a three-guard lineup. Take the last one. Excuse me, yeah, Sean. Just about to say that. Delphin steps on. Goodness. See, the guards can't give him the ball there. And that chance for the hammer for Texas. Well, I think they will get Gomes out of the game here. But you got to give Kenton Paulino a lot of credit there for not allowing Donnie McGrath to get the that's ball true back. Too. Once they gave it to Douthat, he did a great job of pressuring, and that's what forced that turnover. Why give it to Douthat, though, right? Well, they were giving it to him to reverse the ball. Mm -hmm. Guys, would you agree a big nine seconds here? Maybe your Providence, you've worked so hard to get from 21 down to single digits. It would be a momentum builder perhaps for Texas if they could score here and take advantage of the turnover heading to the break. Yeah, I would agree. And they've got enough guys to put it on the floor now, Texas, to dribble by. And they're extending the floor. I would think they'll stay straight man here. A little more size on the floor for Tim Welsh is Herbert Hill, number 15. 6'9", freshman from Kinston, North Carolina, checks in. One thing you don't want to do here is foul. And they've got a nice trap again. And almost a turnover, but it wound up to Boddicker. Underneath, they turn it over with 2.3 seconds left. And not a bad look by Boddicker either, though. You know, he could have cleanly held on and could have had a nice, easy deuce. Heady, heady play. Ryan Gomes has come back in now that they're on offense. And Klox returns for Boddicker. He's got to be careful now not to push off on Tucker Gomes. And Tucker trying to three-quarter. They'll try and throw right to him, Jay, I believe, on the top of the key. Klox well, trying to make it difficult for Delta to throw it in. Good play by Tucker. Chance for a heave for Paulino. No good at the buzzer. A tale of two halves. The first 12 minutes dominated by Texas, but Providence came back, led by their... Welcome back to the Dunkin' Donuts Center in downtown Providence, Rhode Island. Texas with an eight-point lead, but at one point with about seven and a half minutes to go in the first half, they led by 21. You have to give Providence credit. It looked like it could have been a very bad night all the way around for the Friars. Well, they really came back well, but two things Providence has to keep in mind. Turnovers, they have to limit their turnovers, and they have to keep Texas off the offensive glass. That's where they gave up the majority of their points in the first half. Coach, what do you do? 2-3 zone? I'm thinking, why not try to 2-3 now? Even though the man-to-man has been good because of the depth of Texas, can they make the jump shots? You will it under stress now. They were making the deep ones early, Texas. Maybe they won't be as effective. Now there is game pressure on Texas, and I agree with you. I think switching up the defense would be good. Give them some different looks. But one thing they have got to do is make Texas play against their half-court defense. Nothing in transition. And as I suggested, man-to-man. -man. That would Tim Welsh have to be worried. <laughs> no. You know what? If the man doesn't work, he still has that to go to. Ivy with Tucker, Newton, Buckman, and Paulino to begin the second half for Texas. 
They're really having a trouble getting into things now. Paulino tried to dump it off for Buckman. He was able to run it down to the corner. Three seconds to shoot, and Mouton the miss. Rebound, Gomes. Gomes to McGrath with Kaba, Dalton, and Cote. The same five that started the game for Providence begins the second half. Nice back screen gets Gomes to the hoop. Got to give an easier pass. Not communicating Texas on that back screen. And Miles the first half stats. Providence attempted just 16 shots, but it was the free throw line as Bill highlighted. 20 for 21 that kept them in the game. Paulino fouled before the shot by Sheku Kaba. First foul on Kaba, the senior from the Bronx. One of 15 children. And Tim Welsh, when we spoke with him this morning, said Kaba tends to be our barometer. When he plays well, we tend to win. Well, he hasn't done much tonight. Well, that's one guy that was always home on time for dinner, I'll bet. Well, his barometer had five turnovers in the first half. Tough shot, good defense by Douthat. And as a result, Kaba really wasn't on the floor very much when they made their comeback. Tucker kept it alive for Texas and a foul on Providence. It's on Golds, and that's his third. You know, Jay, the effective weapon, I think, for Texas has been dribble drives and being creative. And, and I just think defensively, they're not communicating as well as they're going to have to. And then into the second half, neither team has scored here in the second half. Paulino, sophomore from Los Angeles, played very little last season. Here in just 17 games, averaged a point a game. He's much more of a factor. This year, Buckman, first without T.J. Ford, the opportunity to play there in abundance for Paulino. Douthat's arms are so long, you can't get a good look. Buckman had a tough jump hook. Well, that's why he's got to go into it. Yeah. Got something go into the basket and go right into his chest. Not a good look here. Good idea, but if it's not there, you don't have to pass it. That's turnover number six for Kaba. And 15 for the Friars. Nice defense by Tucker. He almost, it seems, sucked them into that backdoor attempt. The Browns did a nice job in their pick and roll situations, showing big. Ivy, well defended by Kaba, made the shot nonetheless. Roy L moves. And what an underrated player Roy L. Ivy is. The long wingspan, an outstanding defender, but he's also an excellent scorer. He just shuts people's da people down, Jay. This is an outstanding job. I like the story they tell about when he was being recruited out of Queens and not very highly recruited. When Rick Barnes went to the home, the dad, Rod Ivey, asked Coach Barnes, why are you recruiting my son? He's not very good. <laughs> <laughs> Have they spoken since? Doubt it. A little follow. He has eight. Two more than his average per game. And here they go with the trap because they were able to score. Can't pick up your dribble. And Gomes, as the point man on that press, needs to be careful not to get the fourth foul. The shot rattles out to Mouton. He dumped it off for Tucker. Unselfish play by the Longhorns. And then Tim Higgins with a whistle. Buckman might have blood on his face. You know, Sean, the story comes to mind that Rick Barnes gave us today. He said that Luke Conaseca, when he retired, he went down and spent time with him. For the press offense, he still runs. Well, it didn't work in the first half, but that time, Jay, they posted up. They hit the guy, turned, and got something very good around the rim. And Texas has been absolutely killing Providence on the offensive glass. That's 16 points off second shots in this ballgame. Buckman has had to go out of the game. There's a cut on his face. Doubt it. Three minutes into the second half. Texas by 10. Cote for three. Nice look by McGriff. And Texas negligent there on the baseline. Well, yet another good job by Ryan Gomes of showing some patience. Nobody picks up Paulino. And then he got stuck under the rim. Out of bounds to Providence. Cutting too deep. Not the right decision. But that's part of getting better. Paulino made his first career start Friday night. He'd been bothered by a hamstring pull that made him unable to play in the first eight games of the year for Texas. They come in at 7 and 2, and their only losses to Duke and Arizona. This is their first true road game of the season. They played two Newport Court games at MSG. Ejection by Thomas. Spurs the break. Tucker lays it in. Nice protection to get it out of town. That's the way to start a fast break. 
Providence went to a little 2 3 set, kind of a Princeton look, but they didn't give it a chance. Drove off the first pass. And the lead back to nine for the Horns. Nearly four minutes played, second half. Jay, they like to lift you with that 2 3 set. Nice penetration here, and one. If it had gone in, the blocking foul called against Tucker. And Burlington will go to the line to shoot two. He gave them a lift when he came off the bench in the first half. We've tasted a few of these in our day, I would think. Huh? Great reaction. Send it out. <laughs> Send it out of town. But, you know, Thomas probably nagging injuries, I think. Not quite the player he was last year with the 11 rebounds to lead the Big 12 Conference in that area. He's been bothered by that back, and he doesn't have quite the explosion, or at least in the games leading up to this one. He really covered a lot of ground on that last block to go up for it. Burlington lifts the first to two. There's a certain toughness he exudes on the floor, I think. A presence. This is my area. Stay out. He's always been such a hard worker. I remember when he was a freshman, Rick Barnes told me that his feet would be black and blue because he ran the floor so hard. Mm. One out of two for the freshman Brewington. He played on a New England prep school championship team at Worcester Academy, coached by Mo Casera, now an assistant at Dayton with Brian Gregory. Ivy did not panic in the backcourt after he lost it. Paulino all alone for three, and it rattles out. Kept alive by Thomas. Nice look. Ivy to Tucker. No foul called. Now a foul. Two-shot foul. And it's against Providence. And it's against Douthat. What I think Texas does as well as anybody, anything loose, including rebounds, anything on the floor, they're just persistent. And this great use of the body by Tucker, Jay. Well, Tucker just finds a way. Got a really long wingspan, seven foot one, and the freshman from Enlo High School in Raleigh brings a lot of energy. But when you boil this game down, it really comes down to turnovers and offensive rebounds. Tucker makes the first. Boy, did the ACC fall asleep on this kid. Well, he was 6'7 or 6'8, as you said earlier, Jay. Probably would be at an ACC school, but a little undersized for some. But he's coming off back-to-back 20-point -back games. First freshman through that at Texas since Chris Mim in 1998. Off Tucker. It'll be Providence's ball after media timeout. When we come back, a visit with former Friar coach Rick Patino. Texas leading Providence with 15 with the rifle. As we mentioned in the first half, that young man in the center of your screen is Richard Patino, Jr., Jr. at Providence College, a manager of the basketball team. His proud dad, Rick Patino, is here tonight and standing by with Andy Katz. Thanks, Sean. Coach, you came to see your son, Richard. Uh, how, is he how much is he aspiring to be a coach? Well, he's a student assistant. He, I'm very proud of him because first two years he spent at St. Andrews assistant coaching. Now he's a student assistant learning under one of the great coaches at Timmy Welsh. What do you think of uh, Providence's press so far? It's doing great. I'm hoping they can come back in this game, turn it around. Earlier this season, you talked about Louisville staying hungry and humble. You beat two number one teams. Can your team still stay hungry and humble? I hope so, because that's the key to our success. Coach, before we let you go, what has been the key to your defense? Uh, just, just preparing and obviously playing every possession as if we're down 10. Thanks, Coach. Good luck Wednesday against Southern Miss, guys. If they don't stay hungry and humble, Andy, Rick will find a way to get that hunger and humility back very quickly. Out of bounds, last touch by Texas. Rick and Joanne Catino, as you mentioned, really very proud of all their children, and uh, they should be. They're a very nice family, really a credit to Joanne and Rick, and obviously with Rick's schedule, uh, much of the child raising falls to Joanne. We will we have the privilege to get them off. Well, we all know the coaches have great work ethic. He's one of those guys with an insatiable appetite. I mean, he just really gets after it. That's not nice. to diminish uh, his role as a father because it's a like role that he takes very seriously. And he's very close to his children. Obviously, he's flying all the way up here tonight to watch his son manage the team. Foul called. And Burlington again with the center of the action. He mentioned his hearing loss, which he estimates at about 60 to 70 percent. It's been that way his entire life. And Coach well, so sometimes it does present challenges in communication. He has to make sure that Dwight is looking right at him in the huddles. If it's quiet, sometimes he uh, can hear. But oftentimes he has difficulty, and sometimes when they switch defenses, he 
has to be made aware of it by more active signals than other players might need. And his teammates help out a lot in that regard. They are very good at echoing commands and letting him know what's going on, but he's also a very good lip reader, and I'm sure with uh, the performance in the first half, he didn't have too tough a time <laughs> reading Timmy's lips. And, you know, I used that nice play there, not to interrupt Bill, but they got both free throws, kept it alive for Dalton, and that resulted in two for Gaul. Thanks for that, making it an unattractive game. We'll get back to him later, Sean. A little giveaway by McGrath. But I, I was uh, talking about a month ago, and speaking of reading lips here, we'll check, check out uh, the coach, Timmy, a little bit exciting. He was telling me that in the classroom, they have a receiver hooked up to a microphone with his hearing aid so the professors can just do their normal and he can hear, so they're going to have a way to make sure academically he can deal with it. Oh, you know, rejected by Douthat, saved by Cote. Burlington also has somebody who takes notes for him in class in case he does not hear. He still gets the notes taken. McGrath for a big three. Oh. A little dagger early. The Texas may want to think about a timeout. Yeah, they really rattle in the backcourt here. Coins, where's the postman? Trouble with the dribble, Cote. And a foul called, I believe it's on Paulino of Texas. That's one of those you really don't want the foul called because you've got a layup. But you can see the dribbling without direction, Jay. You're They're not move. looking up the floor to be able to pass ahead. And McGrath hitting big shot in the first half. A big shot here. Nobody steps in. P.J. Tucker just gives a cursory little wave. What does Billy Reynolds call him? The local scribe, talented author, Eminem with a headband. With a headband. Rock and roll, hip hop. And here comes Tucker, and he's hip checked by Cote. And a very good foul. A very good foul. Off to the races. Third foul on Cote. Tonight, Big Monday presented by Bud Light continues, hopefully, with the same kind of action. Kansas and Colorado at 9 Eastern time, then after Sports Center at midnight Eastern. Pepperdine in Utah. Big Monday presented by Bud Light on ESPN. Tom McDonough, Jay Billis, Bill Raftery, Andy Katz at the Dunkin' Donuts Center. Where are you going? Oh my wow, goodness. Wow, what a bailout call that was as Ivy out of control, spinning down the lane. And fortunate to get away with that. And they're playing like a road team right now, Jay. Uh, not the composure you would expect of a strong group like Texas. Sixteen foul on Providence. If you're just tuning in, this is Big Monday presented by Bud Light. Texas against eight and one Providence College. Early on, it was Texas by 21. They had a 32 to 11 lead. Providence chipped away, got it to eight at the half. And now trailed by five after the free throw by Ivy. And Providence has made Texas play against their half court defense. The Longhorns have struggled a bit. Where they've succeeded is in transition, off turnovers, and off of the offensive glass. And against the Bantam, I haven't seen a high low. I haven't seen them lock up their guy in the post area. All the things you're accustomed to see. Jones, a little bit quiet here in the second half. The three, barely grazed the front rim. Tucker had trouble, bounced it off the foot. Nice save by Douthat. Gomes back for Dalton. In traffic. Needs to get out of the lane. Gomes blocked and a foul call. What a catch by Dalton from Gomes. That was a turnover. There was so much heat on it. Great eye-hand coordination. And this is matching the aggression against Texas. You must step up to the plate, Jake. And Ryan Gomes has been absolutely everywhere in this basketball game. A terrific job by P.J. Tucker defending Gomes over in the corner. Not going for his shot, but forced a bad shot. But then the aggressiveness in Providence in going after the ball, what we didn't see in the first 10, 12 minutes of this game. Good miss from the line by Gomes. He had been 11 for 11. And Providence was missed only one free throw in the first half. Is one out of five here in the second half. That's a 20 for 21 in the first 20 minutes. Got the bounce on the second, and Tim Rush sends Sheku Kaba back into the ball game. Gomes will get a quick breather. Looks like he didn't want to come out. Well, I think that the missed free throw was a tip to Timmy to give him a blow. Because sometimes you don't have your legs on it. Look ahead. 
Ivy does to Thomas. Ivy Thomas, Moreno, Tucker, and Mouton for Texas. Now settle and get organized. Make the D work. And the man for Providence. Nice screen roll and replace. Nice job putting pressure on the ball there. And Daffy with good footwork in the post. Tough shot. And an air ball. Thomas cleans up the mess after the miss by Mouton. Four points for James Thomas. So that's his game. And you play that kind of defense and give up yet another offensive rebound. That is really deflating for Providence. Barely now by seven. Nearly seven minutes into the second half. Good cut, but the miss by Kaba. Can't get any better. Moreno learned how to play in his native Columbia from his mother, who played from the Colombian national team. Ivy. And the lead nine. 15 points for Ivy. And he has been absolutely spectacular in this ballgame. Timeout Providence. 1247 remaining. Texas 54 to 45. Back at the Dunkin' Donuts Center in downtown Providence, Rhode Island. Texas ranked number 16 this week, leading Providence by 9, 12.47 to go. They weathered a few Providence storms. The Friars had it within four here in the second half after being down by 21 in the first half. Ryan Gomes has led them back. He has 20 points, four rebounds. He plays it in to Cabo with Poti, McGrath, and Dalton. And I was trying to just scratch the surface with Gomes, the things he does, and they don't have to, he handles the ball against the press, and screens, cuts. Hey, this is one of the better games I've seen Royal Ivy play. He has been everywhere in this ball game. He's got a great presence out there, always, I think, playing within himself. I love the way guards take. Shuts down the biggies. Moving screen called against Tuka Poti. There he goes out with four fouls. He's from Finland. And Tim Welsh told us this morning, and Tuka contributed to the story as well when Rick Barnes, when uh, Tim Welsh went over to recruit him in Finland, Poti was in the Army, serving a one year mandatory stint with the Finnish military. Timmy defending his rifle Tony charge. A uh, little nickel diamond in his mind, I guess, on that moving screen. Well, having Ivy move off the ball where he's no longer the point has really freed him up to be a, a player that can look to score in addition to setting others up. But yet it surprises you they won't handle the pressure well with him off the ball because he has played that point position as well. Played it for the bulk uh -oh. of the first eight games of the year. Paulino coming back to full health. Allowed them to move Ivy back to the two guard where he played the last two years. Played point as a freshman, then with DJ Ford the last two years. Ivy played off the ball. Now he can do both. And he lost it on the way up. Two shots. Two. Wow. Oh, the crowd goes bananas, and Tim Wells storms to the end of his bench. And I don't blame him. And they cleared it out for Ivory. And Ivy goes in. A nice job by McGrath moving his feet. He dipped that shoulder in, and he did get a little tight. Yeah, he nicked him. He nicked him. So yes, he great, did. great footwork, though, by him defensively. I think what anger the crowd fell is in Tim Wells. That was, the whistle was quite tidy. The ball, he lost the ball. They went up in the air. He caught it, and then the whistle blew when he hit the ground. Yeah, I, I don't mind a late call. I, as long as it's I'd right. I'd rather a late call than an anticipated. Right, I agree, but I'm just trying to explain sure. why Welsh and the crowd was as upset as they were. And the crowd really letting the officials have it. He thought it was all ball. Did Coach Welsh. It's starting to slip away again from the Friars. To Kansas and Colorado for the rest of the game as soon as you guys finish up Texas and Providence, Sean. All right, Reese, thank you. We're getting a big Monday here at the Dunkin' Donuts Center. Each team in the double bonus. Providence with just one timeout left. The arrow in favor of the Friars. The score in favor of the Longhorns by five, and it'll be their ball out of the timeout. Ivy, Moreno, Mouton, Tucker, and Boddicker. Career high in points tonight for Ivy. 
previous career best was 18. He did that twice. And it's Burlington who picks up Moreno. Burlington, Cava, Gomes, McGrath, and Douthat for Providence. Gomes does a great job showing. Gomes guarding Tucker in the low block with four fouls. Ivy and Tucker each on the floor for Texas at four fouls. Ivy does not get the bounce. Last touched by Tucker. And Boddicker was right in there again. Could have had an offensive rebound. Well, when Douthat comes over to block a shot, that is opening up the yeah. offensive glass. So all five guys from Providence have got to get down there and rebound. Watch when Douthat comes over to try to block this shot. Somebody's got to rotate down. That opens up Boddicker on that lane and also P.J. Tucker. That's too easy. The best offense is a missed shot for Texas. Gomes. Into the corner, little inside out and back into Gomes. Well defended by the smaller Tucker. Nice job staying with him there in the post. He can make these. And he does. A three ball for Gomes. They're as close as they've been in the second half. 27 for Ryan Gomes. He is one tough kid. The early engines by Gomes. Walk. Last time they were within two points was when it was four to two. Moreno walked with the ball. And nearly did again. His shot rattles out. Out of bounds. Last touch by Tucker. And he nearly fouled Gomes after Gomes had the rebound. Jay, early in the year I came up to watch practice and Providence was working on his three-point shooting. He's expanded his game. He's such a tough matchup. And he's using it to be versatile. When he doesn't have it inside, that's when he takes a, a guy like P.J. Tucker on the outside. That's how you use versatility. Not by showing you can do it, but doing it in the right spots. Two to the tie, three for the lead. Providence has not led tonight. If you're just tuning in, they were down by 21 with seven and a half to go in the first half. If they can tie it, it'll be the first tie since 0-0. Zero, zero. Cody guarded by Mouton. Cody shut off by Mouton. 15 to shoot. Whistle and a foul away from the ball. It's on Tucker. Or check that. It's on Moreno. His second. But a double bonus in each direction. And McGrath will have a chance to tie it from the free throw line. Kansas with a five-point lead over Colorado. McGrath at the line. That's his first free throw of the night. Tell you what, they have some Valentine's performance tonight. I mean, they were counted out early. Counted out a moment ago with the tough ball with the intentional foul. I mean, this is just a resilient group of guys. Undermanned, under staffed in many respects but now texas as you mentioned come up i think they gotta go inside you get some touches go to the rim strong for the tie just the 13th and 14th free throws of the year for mcgrath he's 10 out of 14 from the line so all the way back from 21 down ivy bounced it off a foot bodiger hits the floor and comma providence ball and Boddicker holding his head. Uh, it's a perimeter team on the floor for Texas. And this is just great hustle. Who shows the big fella? Gomes. But why do you want to cross over right in front of a goal? I mean, he's just been really shoddy ball handling by this Texas team. And the one guy, Royal Ivy, that showed the most poise with the turnover. Boddicker's okay, stays in the game. Providence with the ball chance for its first lead of the night. A minute 40 to go. Everybody on their feet. Goes to the box. Had the position and is fouled. No basket on the putback for Cote. Gomes fouled on the original shot. He'll go to the line for two. Jay, we talked about Texas sticking, guys. How about this? Well, setting the screen and then immediately looking for your offense. Look how low and wide Ryan Gomes gets. Nobody was going to get around him and discourage that pass. That is a great post-up. And you know what they do also, Jay? If they don't leave it that side, he spins out and goes to the other box and he reverses the ball when their timing's proper. 
27 points for Gomes, 14 from the line, 14 out of 15, now 15 out of 16. Providence has its first lead with a minute and a half to go. They didn't have a field goal until 13 and a half minutes into the ballgame. Bill Raftery, may I? Onion! Oh my goodness, has he? He's put them on the table. Second one short, rebound Thomas. Now the problem with getting Thomas the ball in the box, it's doubt that he, he really deters shooting. The last foul was on Boddicker, his fourth. Boddicker guarded by Gomes, who has four. And McGriff trying to shut off Paulino. Timeout called by Texas. Boy, what a break for Rick Barnes. Saved the turnover. Just didn't like the way they were directing this team. Yeah, Boddicker. Wanted to get rid of the ball, but didn't have anybody to give it to. Well, Rick Patino flew up from Louisville to see a game, and he picked a good one to come to. It's, it reminds me of a Georgetown game years ago. It seemed that atmosphere, wild, woolly. Nobody agreed with the calls. I'm just very impressed with their ability, Providence, to come back and stay with it, Jay. They've shown a lot of guts, but right now Texas is the team that's got to show some guts. They've got to run something in the half court. I think they may want to spread the floor a little bit, let Ivy take his man off the dribble and try to create something because they've been absolutely unable against this Providence man-to-man -to, -man to run anything. And nothing inside. I see Tucker on the floor. I might go for him. You've got to get to the foul line or get an easy shot. And it bears repeating for those just joining us. Providence playing on one of its best players, Rob Sanders, averaging 13 points per game. Very athletic wing player who would be great against this athletic Texas team. Two broken fingers, middle finger and ring finger on his right hand. He's out at least a couple of weeks, they believe. Each team with one timeout left. They're sending Royal Ivy over to the bench to clean off his leg. He may have some blood on it. Uh, they're they're going to have to take him out. Well, they just patch him up, get him back on the floor. Boy, what a bad break if they have to lose him for this possession. He's ready. Oh. They're going to put him in. I think Moreno's got to come in for him, and then Ivy's going to have to sit out for one possession. Yep. I thought the refs were going to let him get away with Rick Barnes furious. Boy, what a tough break for Texas. Ivy had blood on his knee. They bandaged the knee, but in the interim, the substitute had come in for him, so he has to wait for the next dead ball. I think it's got to be Mouton getting a touch, doing some damage. They go inside of Tucker, trying to back in. Doubt that the jump hook by the 6 7 player couldn't get it over the length. They doubt that it's 6 10 with those incredibly long arms. And so that's an excellent point. He's just stopped everybody around the rim, doubt it. Providence with the ball up by one. Whoa, the pass caught Gomes by surprise. They'd be wise to give it back to Gomes, a good free throw shooter. McGrath, a quick three. They didn't need it. Wow. And then Moreno saved it, but it was taken away by Cava. Now the shot clock just about off. Oh, that's going to be Foz McGrath. Now that's what that's, we were talking about. That could be intentional. intentional. That, that is excessive contact. This intentional foul has got to go. That was excessive contact right there. A Cava, Cava's celebrating. It's not the time to celebrate. But here's your point, Jay. This is just overzealous. Uh, you know, it no, looked it worse a, live. No, it, it, it looked a lot worse live. That, yeah. that was a good no call on the intentional mm -hmm. foul. But if it's a matter of intent, I mean, clearly McGrath was intentionally trying to foul. Wasn't McGrath intentionally... Wasn't Bodiger intentionally trying to foul McGrath? Well, well, that's why this intentional distinction's got to go. It's, to me, it's got to be excessive contact. Right. And I don't think intent, the intentional foul should have been called on the other end right. when it was called on Donnie McGrath. I think they've been fouled out. out, by the way. Well, excuse me, Bill. With that foul, Bodiger out of the ball game at eight points and a rebound. Two for three from the floor. Two for two from the line. One rebound. No assists. Now, this foul looked a lot worse in real time. Live. I think the body bounced at the end, too. Oh, well, that's a big body on Bonica. Right, it? it is against well, the smaller guy. The graph faked it a little bit. Let's be yeah, honest. He faked too. it. He did the old Pratt he, fall. He faked us out. He sure did. Two for two from the line. That memorable trip moments ago. And Ten for 14 for the year. Doesn't penetrate much, so he doesn't get to the line much. Now, this is where you find out about your guys shooting them well, coming down the stretch. 
You know, when I be back on the floor, things have got to go through his hands, Jake. And if he makes this one, Texas has got to take it to the basket. If they can kick it out to an open three-point shooter, fine. But they've got to draw the defense in order to do it. They've got to stretch the game out, get the deuce, and then get the foul. Providence by three. Jay, if they shoot the three and miss, the game could be over. They've got to go quickly. Paulino down the lane, trying to hand it off to Thomas. They got the flick it right to Ivy for three, and the tie with 15 and a half to go. What a break for Texas. That pass got deflected right to Ivy, having a great scoring night of his career here tonight. Boy, it's a short clock to call a timeout. Now the inbounds becomes very important for Providence. Uh, he was waiting for them to dribble the ball up quickly. He beat Tim Welsh, and he strolled up, sprinted up. They could have had it in double digits. Boy, how often do we see a broken play where everyone's collapsed in the lane lead to an open three? And here's who they were looking for, Mouton. But you're right. Everybody gets in, gets a hand up, and it kicks right out. Out, get the puppy set. Did we say against the other way? Boy, a good deflection. Very well done defensively by Providence. It just happened to bounce to the wrong guy. And Royal Ivy, Johnny on the spot. How about that nylon? And uh, he does so many things for this club. Great acclaim on that particular knockdown. Nine and a half to go. And you'd have to think that they will make every effort to get the ball the Gomes and that Texas will do everything to take away that like we hope. Really not a lot of time. Ryan Gomes in this ball game, 28 points. He's done it on both ends of the floor. Well, you know what they're gonna have to do, Jay? If they're gonna either back screen him, get him right to the box, try. If they don't have it, put it on the floor and then maybe create something on the road or the dish to him. But it's got to be inbounds, get yourself organized, and take the last shot. I think that's very important. Give yourself a chance to tip with three or so seconds. The first challenge to get it in. No timeouts for Providence. And the arrow in their favor. And Texas does a good job at not letting you see the floor. We've seen it earlier in the game as well. Boy, they're not putting anybody on the ball. They're putting Moreno playing center field there. They did get it into Golds quickly back. For the drive for McGrath. He had it stripped by Moreno. Got it back. It's an air ball. And a timeout called by Texas with 1.9 left as the free ball wound up with P.J. Tucker. It looked like there should be more time on that. A little bit of extra time on that when they were trying to call the timeout. Just a couple of tenths, though. I think they're gonna, they may take a look at it. They can take a look at it and likely will. Rick Barnes up questioning the officials about it. Should there be more time? Tim Higgins to the monitor. A good move to the rim right here by McGrath and the ability of Thomas to negate and no call the right particular shit. Look at him again, Thomas. We talk about Douthat being long and tough around the rim. I'll tell you what, they were calling timeout with 2.9. Yeah. Two. Yep. I mean, Edgar Moreno was calling timeout. But there was also a lag time by the time the official blows the whistle. So probably, two, I would say 2-1. What do you think? They're going to roll it for him again. I think it's going to go up to two and change, as Jay said. But the interesting thing, though, is they may signal at that point. But by the time they blow the whistle, you follow? Now look at Moreno calling for the calling. Oh, yeah. You're right. I think the whistle blew a little bit before the clock stopped. Probably about two and a half seconds. Well, yeah, that's a big difference. With 2.5, you can catch, dribble, and get up a shot. I would think it'll be at half court or longer, Jay. And the guys like to run their hit the post guy on the trail. We've seen Valpo do that in the NCAA tournament. Also, like back screens on one side, catch the ball, and turn and look at the other to the rim. Also, what you can do is run, run part of the action to one side of the floor, and the screeners go to the other side mm -hmm. and try to take it to the off side of the floor. So neither team with a timeout left. And it'll be Texas ball. Having to go the length of the court. Mouton with Tucker. Paulino, Ivy, and Thomas out of their huddle. Valtic's going to contest the inbounding play with his incredible wingspan. Burlington 
McGrath, Gomes, and Poti. What do you think Rick Pitino's thinking right now? Oh, I think he's thinking of the uh, uh, the spectrum. Put somebody right. on the ball, yeah, and it's a, when it's in the air, it's a loose ball. Go get it. A nice switch here by McGrath. Hot by Mouton. It looked like he walked, and no basket. Even if it goes in, wow. they were waving it off. Too many dribbles, Sean. He had a chance, really, right about the circle to let one fly. McGrath did a great job on this particular play. The switch out made it a tough catch going away from the basket. You'll see right here, he switched over. Yeah, they were catching. Right there, you should have shot right there. Yeah, that but they were great. catching. The key, as, as the point you made, they were catching the ball going the opposite direction mm -hmm. from their basket. That takes time off the clock. And Douthat was an influence, Sean, as you noted. Big wingspan made it a tough throw, and you just don't want to foul. And the whistle... Favoring Providence in that particular play. Well, tee it up. Well, like the question I would ask you guys is, who does this overtime favor? Texas, the deeper team, certainly, with a 10-man rotation that they use all season long. Providence has played eight tonight, but Andron just played a token couple of minutes. Uh, for the most part, they're a seven-man team. They're without Sanders. Boddicker has fouled out, but you have several other players on both sides in foul difficulty. Well, normally, I would say you're right, the depth, but... The emotion of Providence has been amazing. They've been Momentum. resilient. Uh, Gomes has taken his game up a level, Jay. I, I think the key is really how can Texas run any half-court offense because they haven't done it all game long. The offensive glass has been the place where they've been scoring their points. Mm -hmm. And if Providence can keep them off that offensive glass, I give the edge to Providence. But, you know, the interesting thing, they've done to the three-guard Texas most of the game. They're not used to that. You know what I mean? In other words, they can dribble drive, but they're such... Lack of forward. Well, they've had some shaky ball handling in this game. They've really reacted to pressure. First overtime game of the season for each team. Rick Barnes and the Texas Longhorns had a 21-point lead in the first half. 32 to 11. Well, Candy, Nick, and Carly are home in Austin watching this one. And I'm sure dying as Daddy comes back. Got that warm welcome in. Let's tee it up, guys. Tobin and McGrath, Cote, Gomes, and Dalton open the extra session for Providence. Remains a double bonus on each foul. It will result in two shots the rest of the way. They're going away from Gomes. The timing was off on the duck hit. Got to bring it. Bad pass by McGrath. It looked like he thought Gomes was going to slide down the side of the lane, and he did not. And a pretty good play by Tucker using his strength to keep Gomes away from it. Luton. Back up top for Paulino with Ivy, Thomas, and Tucker for Texas. Paulino tries to shake McGrath and cannot. Ten to shoot. Ivy, awkward shot. It wouldn't go. Tucker in position, kept it alive and has it. Once again, the glass, the best friend. They're getting so many second chance opportunities in Providence. When you talk about how tired they are, one of the reasons they're tired, they're going to play 70 seconds of defense each possession. Nice job by Cote. As Mouton uses the bumps. Fellas, would you believe it if I told you as the ball will go out to Texas with 15 to shoot, that Providence in the game has out-rebounded Texas 32-30 according to the official stats? we got to check offensive rebounding. Eight, there it is. 18-12. Yeah. Very good. That crack crew. More than half the Mike. Texas rebounds on Tex, the offensive end. Tex Molinari right on top of things, our producer. Our director, Mike Schwab, our terrific Big Monday technical crew here tonight. We appreciate all their fine work. Camera guys and tape, Sean. That's uh, our best friend is the tape. The tape guys, I should say. Very warm night in this building. During the time up before overtime, Tim Welsh took his sport coat off, and he looked like he had jumped in a swimming pool in his shirt and tie. He is completely soaked through his dress shirt. Five to shoot. And and Rancho 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 knows it. Now he does, and he has to launch a long three. No iron. That's a shot clock violation. Now that is a major mistake. You've got to be aware if you're a player. You're looking right at the scoreboard. You can see it under the, the clock. Got to be involved in the game. Well, they just had an out-of-bounds situation. I mean, you're, you're always supposed to look at the clock. You're in an out of situation. And, and the forwards are your point guard. Right. And the forwards can look this way. The guards are looking right at the hoop. But that's a team thing. That's where they've all got to say, okay, here's how much time we have. Echo those commands to each other. A break them. Oh, goodness. A single turnover by McGrath in this overtime. 
Tried to feed Gomes along the post and missed him. Now, thought Cote was going to stay out in the wing, and he was cutting to the basket. Providence has spent this entire overtime period on defense. Mm -hmm. And they turned it over 22 times. Well, they had 10 of those in the first nine minutes of the game, and they fell way behind. Neither team has scored in overtime. Three minutes remaining. Luton, a tough shot. Contested well by Cote. Run down by Kaba. Cote has been magnificent guarding Luton. So long and versatile. Not a great athlete, but he really works hard. Mm -hmm. Anticipates. And McGrath now needs to be better with the ball. He's thrown it away twice here in overtime. Cote with 14 on the shot clock. A back screen to the box. Delta. They need to get heading toward the bucket. Gomes a pull up for three long. Perhaps fatigue there. But that shot was well off. Neither team has scored more than halfway through the overtime. And Mouton is trying to run something for him. He's a little bit tired. And it's been a right fight here tonight in a very warm building. Texas cannot get open. They have not been able to run anything in the half court. Fatigue, a major issue right yeah. now. On both sides. Nice move to the bucket. And then a tip up and in by Tucker. Once again, carving the area with that wide body. Texas by two. A graph, a quick three. Way off. Tip out by Mouton. Thomas saved it in half to. Now he throws it away. Goodness, judgment has to prevail. This is reminiscent of the beginning of the game. Ross wants the crowd to stay in it. And they respond a little half-heartedly. Providence is wearing itself out. They play defense just about this entire overtime period. Look at all the many offensive rebounds. Look at all the hands down on the knees. They're all bent over yeah. the face. Paulino, a tough pull-up. On that is a rebound and pulls it out with a minute five to go. I think they're exhausted on both sides. Look at the Texas guy's hands on knees. The graph's got to be aware now. Contain on the dribble. And to try and break them down late. Providence, not only without Sanders, they played a road game Saturday night. So a turnaround from a road trip. Paulino way off of the three. They crashed the boards. Saved by Delta to Cote. They can just about take the last shot of this overtime if they want. Two to tie and three for the lead. Cote got stuck in the air. Another turnover. Oh, my goodness. And Gomes couldn't sprint. They get the foul. Smart. But Gomes couldn't sprint to the box. He was so tired. Yeah, Cote anticipating a cut. And Gomes just didn't have it left in the tank to get there. Four turnovers in the overtime for Providence. Without a point, 22 seconds to go. So you just don't leave your feet, though, Sean, here. Yeah. You can see here, he just couldn't make the move. Anticipating is something you can't do. Let the man get there. The timing is such. Let him catch it on the block. Sellout crowd here tonight, 12,993. Feed it to a terrific ball game that has 22 seconds left in the first overtime. And really reminiscent of the beginning of the game when Providence could not make a shot and turned it over almost one possession after another. Now Tim Welsh barking at John Cloggerty. Kansas has a 10 point lead over Colorado. We'll get to there as soon as this one's over. Tucker at the line for two. Two for four from the line tonight. Very high arcing free throw that goes off. Now, this guy's had some start of his year. First guy back to back 20 point plus game since Chris Mim. And this one's important. Changes the philosophy for Providence if he makes it. And Providence better box out. Or Thomas and Luton will get up there. How young is Tucker, the freshman? He came to the shoot around today with a Scooby Doo book bag over his back. Atta baby, you love to see kids step up and knock them down. Nothing shaggy about that. No, not at all. <laughs> he brought one for Sean, I think. I brought my own. Taba. Well, they shoot a three. Down the wall. McGrath. 
Really had it stripped by Moreno. Got to think three now. Now you do. And dunk it. Don't take it. Cobb can shoot it. McGrath has to shoot it from the corner. McGrath at three. Has it with 3.7 to go. Step it up. Take it a shot. The defense couldn't respond and close out. When he let that go. James Thomas was closing out to him kind of like Hakeem Warwick did on Michael Lee, but wasn't quick enough to get there. What a great shot by Donnie McGrath. Didn't have the legs. Right here, now why would you leave? In the anticipation, and you're right, just not quick enough. And nylon by Eminem with the headband. <laughs> the only shot made by Providence in this overtime. Still alive with 3.7 to go. Well, the overtime started difficult for McGrath. He turned it over the first two possessions. He atones for that with a three from the corner to tie the game. Now Texas a chance to win it. Tucker all the way to the foul line. Lays it up. Does it count? The officials are looking at each other. They're going to go to the monitor. It's got to be good. I think it is going to be good. I agree. Nobody stopped the dribble. But how about the behind-the-back bounce? By the big fella. In Wait. the shoulders, big fella. And the poise. Now oh. the officials have to go to the monitor. Yep, there was no signal to score it or wave it off, but I think we all agree, guys, live it looked like a good free throw. It was the a good field goal, I should say, and a win for Texas. Watch as he finger rolls it out. Failure. The telestrator uh, blocked the view. We're going to have to look at it again. And Rick Barnes is livid right now. We're going to look at it again without the officials breathing down there next. Tim Welsh was over there. He was looking over their shoulder. He immediately waved it off. Let's look at it again. That was closer than I thought, Jay. Here's up in the top. Another look. Watch also for the red light. It's the red light above the basket. That signals. Actually, it's balls the horn, in his hand. It's, it's It should. Well, right. <laughs> it's the light, not the zeros. Well, it's the horn for a horn. The horn. You can't hear the horn. Right. They're going to the go light. with that light. So they got to go with the light. And the officials, I think, I don't think they can decide. Boy, it was so That's close. Right. Well, obviously, they couldn't decide on the horn because you know what they may want to do? They're pointing over here at us. I don't know if they want to put a headset on where they can try to hear the horn. That might be uh, the next order of business as the gentlemen go back toward the scores table. Well, they contemplated coming over to us. Yeah, they pointed at us and looked at each other questioningly. Now they might want to know, can we hear a horn in that headset that they have over there? It is the horn, though. That's yeah. the first. So let's listen and see if we can hear a horn as we look at it yet again. It is so hard to oh tell. But it, is it out of his hand? I stick by my original opinion, guys. I thought it was out of his hand before we heard that horn. They want to hear it and see it again. It is almost impossible to tell. Yeah, yeah. That is that is as close as you can possibly get. I've ever seen. Well, if you can't hear the horn and you have to go by the light, based on that replay, I don't think he beat the light. Well, there I was thought a, he beat the horn, but I don't think the shot beat the light. There was a side angle where you could tell a little bit better in my judgment. Yeah. It's got to be... Out of the hand. Because you can't tell if it's out of his hand right here. Right there. I tell you, that's just... I, wow. I think he let it go in time. This is the angle that I think you can really tell. This is the one we said that we thought it was good. It was out of his hand on this one. Can you see the clock? Well, I'll tell you what. It's out of his hand. with zero. You thought it was but, out of his hand? But remember, when it gets to zero, there's still ten. I think he thinks he's going to get the call. He just walked away. I tell you, I'm not so sure it was out of his hand on that one. That's I like, thought it was on his finger was. When, the, when we saw this right zero it's, that ends the session. It's got to be out of the hand right. fully, not on the way out of the hand. 
The best, the best thing to do is play five more minutes. That's what they're going to do, I think. This is a tough call for the officials. This There's angle, the I don't think you See, can tell. right there now, if that's, is that, if that's right, in contact. The light's not on, though, right? It's, it's no, zero, it's not, but no light. The zeros there. don't matter. No, right? if that's, that's what I'm in, saying. But if that's in his hand still, it's no basket. But it's out of his hand when the light comes on. I think, it, I think it was out of his hand when the light came on, and as a result, that should probably be a good basket. This is the angle where you can tell. Here's the one here, but look, that's still in his hand, Jay. But the light, well, look the at light the light. wasn't on. There was zeros when it was in his hand, but the light wasn't totally in sync with the zeros. But I must tell you, it's the not out right very much. The horn, horn is what counts. But they can't but they judge can't the, hear horn the horn. Replay, Bill. I understand that. So then, I, then I don't so think then if they, they go to the light. Sometimes the light isn't in sync. That's my argument. But, but, the, but the way it goes, Bill, is, is the guy. Once, if they can't tell by the horn, then they go to the light. That, I, I, but I think at this point, with the double zero, the horn, I mean, is the horn instantaneous with the light? That's what my, I'm saying. Chances are it probably isn't. Well, the light, you would think, theoretically, Bill, the back of your argument, the light should come on right in sync with zero, and it right. didn't. Right. The light lags a fraction behind the zero. Here we go again. There, it's, it's going to zero right there. The light is not yet on. It's on zero now. The light is not yet on. They're not perfectly in sync. It's out of his hand before the light comes on, but after the zero. So I think they have to decide if that's a malfunction and it's not all synced up, then it should have come on at zero, and they should wave off the basket. That's their major dilemma over there, the horn. Yeah. Seriously. I mean, that's they don't trust the light. I know Jay's saying that they go to the light, but is it in sync, I think, is the key. Well, the light is not in sync with zero, because it's at zero now, and the right. horn is just there coming there on. Is. There it is. Now it's out of his hand, obviously. Yeah. All right, they've all emerged, and they have a very tough decision to make. And I think it's going to depend, guys, on what they use to make the decision, the zeros or the light. I don't think there's any way they could have used the horn. They're over talking to Tim Welsh, and I have a feeling they're giving him the bad news. I and agree. then they better get the official the police out on this court. Rick Barnes is thinking about telling his team to leave the floor. Yeah. He's contemplating. He told them to go back, and then he changed his mind. But he's thinking about leaving, and he's, oh. and he's talking. They're scoring the basket. Wow. And the officials walk off the floor, and folks, we'll do the best we can. We have Andy Katz here on site. We'll stay with the interaction on Sports Center and ESPN News. Ooh, and Reese Davis now later. Now are coming down. Yeah, this is bad. And this that's is why I said we needed to get those officials off the floor quickly because this can be a very tough crowd here in Providence. And P.J. Tucker better get out of here, too. He's still walking around. Well, I think they're actually keeping him here for an interview, which is really not the smart thing to do. He needs to get out of here. Yeah, they got to take him in. Well, hopefully the fans would have enough respect for the young man to quit the nonsense. I mean, it's a very tough way to end, but the fans don't cover themselves in any glory. And you can see the fans in uh, the security involved with the Texas team there in the tunnel. Rick Barnes. I will watch you tomorrow night break this down. We have your show tomorrow night, correct? Yes, yes we do. The bottles are still coming down. Yep. And it's a shame because it was a great night for college basketball and we'd hate to have it be tainted by an ugly scene. Already some ugliness with bottles on the court. The Texas team in a minor skirmish had appeared in the tunnel. You can understand the emotions running high. And uh, hopefully the officials will let us know what it was in the final analysis. It had to be the light. It was the light. It, was, it, it had, had to be, be the light. Yep. Had Which be. in the chronology is the way it should go. Yes. My yeah. question is, shouldn't that light come on at exactly it zero, zero, zero? I don't think it did. It did not. I will go back to the original point, though. If it should start with the horn, I thought when we heard the, the replay with the horn, the ball was out of his hand before the horn. Did you guys agree with that? I thought it was good live. I, I thought it was good live, and I thought when we heard the, re the replays with the horn, it came out of his hand just before the horn. Uh, well, we're not sure if the officials ever heard a replay with a horn. Now we could. Yeah, we're talk. We're talking though about a split second, a tenth of a second. Let's listen again to the horn. See, I think that's out of his hand before the horn. Mm. Do you guys think so? That, you know, it's it's Sean, tough to I, tell. I, it, it, it doesn't matter what it looked like live. They've got to go to the replay. It yeah, says must in the rules. So then we need that's to know how hard what they used as the basis for the judgment. The light. I'm saying. Mm -hmm. At this point, wow. Much more. Stay tuned to ESPN. Many more updates on the conclusion of this controversial game. Final score in overtime, Texas 79, Providence 77.
Coming up next, we'll get you out to Boulder for Kansas and Colorado. Now for Bill Raftery, Jay Billis, Andy Katz, and our crew. Sean McDonough saying good night from Providence. Now Boulder and Ron Franklin.